This time really concentrate, okay? Concentrate only on God, enlightenment, deeper level of consciousness and happiness. Because the deeper you go, the more you happy, the more enlightened, and the more intelligent, the more uh, blissful, and then you can deal with all kind of problem, if, if any problem. Otherwise, we just concentrate on problem. Then we are right at the problem level, and we could never see it better from above. Then not only you cannot solve this problem, you delay your own spiritual progress and deny yourself of spiritual power, then you lose both. You lose the problem-solving solution and you lose spiritual elevation. Okay. Everything you can benefit from looking at me or thinking of me. It's not this me physical. Yeah. I always afraid of ego. 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 Ah. Yes. Always afraid. It happens to me very often, and I I really want to uh, wake up myself. It's ego. It's not. You know. It's it makes you fall down. Be careful. And it's very, very difficult to know what is it. Am I have an ego or not? And I saw lots of, it happens, lots of my sisters and brothers, the ego fall, falls, falling them down. It's very difficult. And I want to ask you, please, Master, again, how can we protect us from ego, please, Master? <laughs> Maybe I go ask God. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult, difficult, uh, because this world contaminates you, okay? Everybody encourages you. You have to be big, you have to be better than everybody else, and then it's like a competition all the time. So you train yourself to have such a spirit, and it becomes ego. Uh, with practice and with uh, the world's lessons, you will be better. You know, like the world will teach you how to be humble, and then you will know it. Otherwise, like if you work with someone, or if you work with the Master, and then they scold you all the time, or they always point out your fault, then slowly your ego also come down. But the more ego come down, the spirit will come up. Yeah, too much garbage in <laughs> collected in here. It's not your fault. None of you has ever done anything wrong. It's not your fault. Even if I reprimand you for that, or you know, telling you that is bad and all that, but still, it's it's not your fault. If you're not born in this world, you would have never done anything wrong like that. Nothing you could do in heaven that is wrong, okay? Also, before you're born here, sometimes you pick up some of the, the wrong things so that you can be born here. If you're perfect, you cannot. The Master don't have to carry that to come down, <laughs> because the Master come down here and pick up garbage from everybody, so she didn't have to pick up any garbage to bring down with. Yeah, but for ordinary being, you must have something to come down. It's not unconditional. That's why I say being born in a human body is very difficult. It's a very rare chance to be a human. And even then they make you pick up some garbage to bring it down, so that you have to train, to struggle. And that's what we call ego. <laughs> it's not your fault to begin with. Yeah, and try to ignore it. You know, when you know if it's your ego rises its head up, then you ignore it. You say, no, that's not right. Then you change for what you think is right, okay? Or swallow your pride. If you know you're wrong, just apologize. If you know it's not the correct way, then try to do the correct one again, okay? Always try, vigilant. That's all we can do. Because the ego is born with us so that we make trouble, so that we go into the wrong way, so that you know, we mess up our life. That's the purpose. <laughs> Delusion. Delusion ego. Okay? Don't worry about it. Everybody has it. Ask him, do you have any ego? ego? <laughs> Mucho ego. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, you don't just have ego and mistake. You see, you have also good things with you. You have the five precepts, you eat vegetarian, you, you meditate. Maybe ego is just one little part, okay? And try to subdue it or ignore it. Mm. It's a difficult mm-hmm. question, difficult to do this. Even the fifth level saint, if you reach a fifth level, of spiritual consciousness, you still have one percent ego. I want to erase it. No, not on the fifth level. You still have one percent. <laughs> when you go much higher, you know, like border the sixth level, then maybe you have no more. Hmm? That's why you stay in the fifth level downward, because human being they carry things with them. Even the fifth level, you still have one percent ego. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, one percent is a lot. Yeah, why? Because zero percent is better. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, you will go there sooner or later. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what is it? I always believe that. I can erase that ego yes. like, until not present. Ah, sure, sure you can. Hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but yes, we can, yeah? Okay. No, um, not like one percent completely in the fifth level, but you know, the, some residue is still there, yeah? Hmm. It's just the mechanism of the five worlds, you know? Everybody has to have ego, otherwise nobody wants to do anything. If you don't have ego, you will not want to go to work, you will not want to earn money, you will not want to look good, you will not bother to wear this clothes better than the other one, thing like that, okay? It's just a driving motion, driving uh, force, so that we continue to live in this life. If you don't have the ego, you don't even want to live anymore. Not because you're depressed, not because you don't feel good about life, it's just driving force. You have no motive. Hmm? Okay? Yeah. You don't want to compete in, in sport, you don't want to <laughs> know more about wisdom, you don't want to do anything. It's a driving motor for our life. Okay? So keep it until fifth level. And then over there, you don't need it, you can also discard, you know? After you reach it, you can do with ego or not ego. You can keep it or not, okay? Mm. Right now, still need. <laughs> yeah. Like the engine of the car is noisy and is oily if you touch it. Most of the Master do not uh, advocate supernatural power for fearing that we attach ourselves too much to the uh, spiritual materialism. And therefore, we have not the interest and the strength enough to go further into a higher realms of realization. In India, there was a story about a king. He was a very good king and loving to his subject. Now, one day, he uh, arranged that all his possessions, treasures, will be given to the people at large. Whoever needs anything can just come and satisfy him or herself at the exhibition without any condition at all, because he has no children and no family ties, so he loves his people as his own. Everyone came and picked something of his heart desire. But there was one girl. She came and goes straight to the back of the, uh, probably the room or the place where the king exhibited all his possessions and put her hand on his shoulders and asked, are you also available? And the king was surprised. <laughs> Say, why? Didn't you like any of the things that I have uh, laid outside? So the girl said, no, I only like you. <laughs> so and then uh, 
Of course, the king was very happy that somebody liked him for himself alone and not because of his treasures. Of course, then I, the king availed to her and then they, they got married, something like that. Uh, live happily ever after, as we should be. Huh? And you know what happened? Huh? Huh? The girl did not want anything, but the whole nation belonged to her, including all these subjects and all these objects. Therefore, in our past, we also do not uh, advocate the miracle power. Doesn't mean we don't have. After the great enlightenment, or even small enlightenment, we have all the powers that we want. But then we will have so much that we don't even know how much power we have. Instead of clinging to a corner of the house, we have the whole house and included that corner. Some people, before coming to learn this uh, immediate enlightenment method of the heavenly light and sound, they have also tried to practice in many other meditational ways. And they have also achieved probably somewhat of the city's power or the power of seeing very far away or hearing something which is not in the vicinity. For example, uh, I sit here and I can see what happened in London or I can hear what happened in Paris. Yes, this is so-called CD power. Or probably we can read the other people's mind, see what he's thinking about us. Yeah. Wow, well, this is probably good for the spy, <laughs> for the people <laughs> who are doing 007 or something like that. <laughs> but then after they have uh, become initiated into our past, and somehow they lost these powers. Or maybe they have seen some better things or know better knowledge that they have begged the master to take away this city's power from them. There were two reasons for this. First, probably they had gone too high, higher than the city power level. So they have overlooked the previous uh, miracle that they have possessed. The second reason why they have not uh, lost this power and beg the master to take them away, it is because they probably still cling to this power somewhat in their mind. And so the master let them have the choice to forsake it themselves or not. Because after you have gone into a little bit further region of consciousness, a higher level of being, then you will feel that these cities, so-called power, are more hindrance than help to our spiritual progress. Therefore, we automatically do not want to use them. Suppose you sit here in samadhi, in, in a very tranquil state of mind, where you are in a super awareness of your true self, and you have no desire absolutely for heaven and earth. And then you see something happen in London, which is very gruesome. And, uh, and then you can't do nothing about it. Would that make you feel comfortable? No, not really, right? <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> yeah, you feel more frustrated, and then you get more upset, and you have uh, try to attain the state of peace of mind, and here you are, feeling very frustrated and miserable about somewhere else's condition of which you cannot do absolutely anything at all. Or maybe you see to somebody else's heart or mind, or you see into your wife's heart and see that she's loving the neighbors and not you. And then could that be helpful when you're sitting in meditation? No. And suppose somebody bearing a lot of hatred against us, and then we have the power to penetrate his mind. That would be very uncomfortable feeling for both. Because most of the people have sometimes very uh, uncontrollable feeling 
uncontrollable emotion within themselves, which might or might not have nothing to do with them. And if we get to know all these things, it's only useless. And then we always worry about this mundane level, and we can never get into the beyond in order to merge ourselves in the greatest wisdom. There are a lot of uh, spiritual happenings in our century, and therefore it is good for us, very good for our people in this age, to know so much about the superpower within ourselves. But sometimes it also confuses us as to follow which direction, because mostly we will be tempted by the so-called immediate result, like a miraculous power or healing ability, and uh, seeing through the walls, <laughs> or walking in the space, etc., that we forgot what is the main purpose of uh, practicing meditation or getting to know spirituality at all. It shouldn't be, really. Because when we know our true self, the supreme wisdom inside, we will know everything. That, I think, is the best measurement, the best standard to church, which path we should concentrate on. Therefore, Jesus also said, Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all other things shall be added unto you. The kingdom of God is not something that is very far away in heaven. It is here right now and we have them all within ourselves. We only have to unlock it and use it every day. And then we will see how better a person we become, how wise, how loving, and how satisfied a person we will become. <laughs> <laughs>